So do you overthink? Are you an overthinker? When I think of overthinking, I think of that role that Sarah Jessica Parker played in the movie, I Don't Know How She Does It, where she plays a mom, but she's also got pretty high pressure career. And there's that scene where she's like, you know, researchers say that moms of young children never sleep through the night. And she goes, and they couldn't figure out why, but if they would have asked me, I could have told them. And then she goes through her whole mental list, right, of all the things that she's got to do. And she's just lying there awake with item after item after item. That's what I think of when I think of overthinking. But overthinking comes uh, in many ways. It rears its head. And that's what I want to talk about today is overthinking and how to downregulate the nervous system as part of an overthinking solution. I'm Dr. Kit Slyes, life coach and licensed psychologist, and I'm here because I want to inspire perfectionists and anxious achievers to feel calm and confident while setting healthy and clear boundaries. So what exactly is overthinking? I gave you maybe an example of what it might look like, but what is the actual definition? How else does how else does it present itself? Because the reality is that constant automatic thoughts, that's normal. It is normal to be thinking all the time and not really be totally aware of the thoughts that we're having, but that's not, that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about overthinking. Overthinking is this continual, repetitive revisiting of topics without really coming to a productive solution that would put the thought to rest. So this includes just analyzing, replaying, or just really worrying, going to the to the um, replaying of those of maybe things that have happened in the past, or going to the future analyzing and going to the worst case scenario and thinking of all the possible future outcomes or future scenarios, or just really focusing on little minor details. Um, If we're thinking about the Sarah Jessica Parker example in that movie, just going through that mental list, but maybe going through it over and over and over again, um, as opposed to just having the list and putting it aside and putting it to rest and feeling like, good, I've got my list for tomorrow, I'm set the overthinker or the experience of overthinking as you were just going through it over and over, replaying, maybe tweaking minor details that don't really have a big outcome. And the thing about overthinking is that we engage in it, we tend to engage in it when we're stressed or anxious or depressed, but it's also unproductive in a way that then increases stress, anxiety, and depression. So it's a response to stress and it increases stress. And so today I'm not, there are specific strategies for the overthinking itself. And I will link to some of my other videos below where I address strategies that can help with actual overthinking. But today I'm talking about how to down regulate the nervous system. Okay. And the reason for that is because as I mentioned, overthinking comes from stress and it's also a stress response when we are stressed what's actually happening in our body is that our nervous system goes into self-preservation self-protection mode one of those modes is the fight or flight mode that is a stress response and it is a protective response but it's activating our nervous system. So our sympathetic nervous system is coming on board. It's mobilizing all of our resources. Let's get that heart rate pump in. Let's get that respiration going, crank up the blood pressure. We got to be ready to fight or flight the proverbial lion that's about to come through our door or that feels like it's come through our door, right? That's what our brain thinks is happening when we're feeling that stress. Even though the lion is, oh, I've got to pay this bill, I've got to remember to do this thing, or oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that to Sally, okay? So down-regulating the nervous system, it doesn't directly address the overthinking, but it is a necessary part of the whole picture, right? Because when we are overthinking, we're in that activated nervous system state, 
and we need to get back to a rest, digest, parasympathetic nervous system state, which we do uh, largely by way of the vagus nerve. Okay, this is a really um, vagus, Latin for wandering. It's a large nerve that runs throughout our body. It touches so many of our major systems, heart, lungs, digestive. Um, and so by activating that vagus nerve, it's going to help down regulate. Okay. So I'm going to give 13, <laughs> um, ways to do that today. I'm not going to go deeply into every single one, but here's my challenge for you today. I don't want you to go out and do all 13 of these things. <laughs> I want you to pick one that you are not already doing that you maybe have done in the past and you know that you liked and you've just fallen off of it or one that you haven't tried that you thought about trying. Just pick one and try it. Okay. So a uh, way to downregulate the nervous system to help with the overthinking. Number one is deep breathing, diaphragmatic breathing or belly breathing. Okay. And I'm just going to give sort of a quick and dirty tutorial on that right now. Um, so this involves breathing in through the nose and out slowly through the mouth, through pursed lips. Some folks like to count. Um, if you're high on anxiety, sometimes the counting is counterproductive. So it's up to you. There's a version of breathing called square breathing where you're doing an in for four, a hold, an out for four, and a hold for four. So it's four, 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 four. That's great. Um, it's more helpful when you are already in a down-regulated state. When we are down-regulating the nervous system, what we want to do is actually really extend that exhale. So if you like to count, you might breathe in for four, pause at the top, and exhale for about eight. We want that exhale to be longer than the inhale. If you don't like the counting, I don't like the counting, I just do a nice long exhale and try to get as much air out of my lungs as I can. The other really important thing is that we want, we, we don't want to be breathing from the chest. We want to use a diaphragm, which is this muscle below our lungs. And when we're using that to breathe, what's happening is, is our belly is actually expanding. So what you can do is put your hands around your belly, like where your belly button is kind of. And what you want to feel on the inhale is this. And then exhale. There's going to be a little bit of movement in your chest still. That's okay. But we want to just make sure that we're prioritizing the belly. Some other ways to really get into a nice relaxed state is on your exhale. Relax your jaw. Relax your shoulders away from your ear. Okay. Or on that exhale, imagine with your breath, you're just gently lowering a feather down to the ground. That's diaphragmatic breathing. The more you practice it, the better your body is going to get at going into a more downregulated nervous system state. So if you like this one, aim for about five to 10 of those breaths a day. It's like one to two minutes and do it while you're doing something else. Do it like when you get into bed in the evening. Do it, um, do a diaphragmatic breath at every stoplight on your way to work. So you show up nice and calm. Okay, do it, pair it with an activity that you already do. So it cues you to do it. Okay. The second way to downregulate the nervous system I want to talk about today is light exercise. So we're not talking about vigorous exercise here, although the, there is a time and a place for that, if that's your thing. But really, some light exercise can be very, very helpful. So this can include just walking. Dancing is a great way. That's particularly a way to kind of get the vagus nerve going here. We just want to get the heart rate up a little bit. And it doesn't have to be for very long. You know, 10 minutes a day, um, twice a day. Or, or shoot, even just 10 minutes a day. If you're not, If you're not doing any exercise, starting somewhere can create benefits, okay? The third way to downregulate the nervous system, meditation and mindfulness, um, or mindfulness meditation. Mindfulness and meditation are not 
the exact same thing. There's a lot of similarities and overlap. I don't have time in this video today to go into the depth and breadth of all of that. But um, if you're interested in doing some meditation, I really like the app Insight Timer. It has free meditations that you can access. And if you want to um, upgrade for access to more, you can do that. I find that the free ones can be really great. Um, Calm or Headspace or some other good apps, although I do believe that those are paid. So there's great ways to just incorporate some meditation. Um, mindfulness, you could incorporate also, it's just this notion of being present and aware of yourself and your surroundings without any judgment. Okay, so you're not judging your emotions or your reactions. Being mindful could include just checking in with your five senses, noticing thoughts, focusing on your breath. You could do all of those things while you're brushing your teeth. And just doing that would be a nice way to pause and downregulate. You could incorporate mindful moments throughout your day. So if you have a job where you are interacting with people or clients, do a quick mindfulness grounding. Just take a deep breath. Feel your two feet on the floor and set your intention before you have an interaction with somebody, before you pick up the phone, before you go into a room or start a Zoom meeting, okay, whatever that is. Just even that little tiny, little tiny pauses throughout the day is going to help kind of sprinkle in some down regulation for you. Okay, the fourth way, yoga. This incorporates all of the things that we've talked about so far, the breathing, movement, and um, mindfulness yoga can do all of those okay there's lots of resources out there on yoga um youtube there's good resources for yoga out there check out um if you don't do yoga you can find some beginner resources and try it on for sides it's i i don't know if i could life without without some yoga i'm not i'm not i wouldn't call myself an advanced yoga practitioner but i need it from time to time i'm, I'm not doing it every day although I'd probably be better off if I did, but it's a great one to try. The fifth way, singing or humming. This one really um, brings that vagus nerve into play here. Some of the, all the previous ones, but just the, that vibration, the resonance, um, the act of expressing if you're singing a song that you make up or something like that, that can be a great way to downregulate the nervous system. So sing along to your favorite song, sing, in the, sing out loud in the car, on your commute, whatever that is. Number six, spend time outdoors. So there's a lot of research on what being outdoors does um, for our brains and getting us this sense of awe and a sense of feeling that there is something greater. And um, stepping outside for even just a minute or two can do that. You don't have to go hiking in nature, although if that's your thing, that is a great way to access a down regulation as well. But even just if you're just stepping outside a few times throughout the day um, when you're at work or whatever it is that you're doing, that can be um, a helpful tool. Number seven is limiting your screen time. And in particular, I'm talking about, you know, the doom scrolling on social media and, um, or consuming news. And I know here you're watching a screen as you're listening to me, but sometimes if we're overdoing it, I mean, pay attention to yourself. If you're spending an hour on social and you come off of it and you feel great, then fine. But check in with yourself after an hour of whatever your go-to social media or news media outlet consumption is and see how you feel in your thoughts and your body. And if it's not so great, then that might be an indicator for you that it is activating the nervous system and that staying off it could help with some down regulation. And instead, you might consider number eight, which is gratitude journaling. This is just bringing your awareness and attention to things that you're grateful for. If you make a daily habit out of this, you can really see some big rewards from this. It is really hard to be in a state of fear or anxiety when our brain is focused on what we're grateful for. And the things that you uh, record in your gratitude journal don't need to be big, mind-blowing things. They can just be little things. There is a positive psychology strategy called three good things where you're writing down three good things every day. 
but you're also writing down how they made you feel and what was the cause of the good thing. And somehow focusing on all of those aspects of it can um, really bring some positive, um, some positive things to your mental state. So I go more into that one, but for the sake of time, I'll move on to the next one, which is prioritizing sleep and doing that. Your gratitude journaling before sleep, if you're having trouble sleep, um, trouble sleeping can be a good way to do that one. You could also do some sleep meditations and do a one-two punch there with the meditations you were talking about earlier, finding some sleep meditations, exercising can also help with sleep. Um, but just making sure that you're prioritizing sleep. So if you tend to kind of, push back your your sleeping time because you're on social media or on that screen or you're doing lots of things or whatever just giving yourself that time to wind down before bed making sure that you're using the bedroom just for sleep and trying to get up at about the same time every day or some good sleep hygiene strategies again I can make a whole nother video on just that one um, but that is a good thing to help if, we're, if we don't have enough sleep it is hard for our nervous system to be in a down regulated state Okay, number 10, uh, eating healthy food. So this means whole unprocessed foods, prioritizing whole unprocessed foods and including a lot of variety. So um, proteins that agree with your body, fruits, vegetables, grains, those sorts of things. There's just more and more research every day about how um, diet is really an integral part, part of important mental health. So um, it doesn't, and I like to think of it as like, you don't have to revamp your whole diet. Just think of how you can add in things that are healthy for you and that feel like they are nurturing and nourishing you as opposed to thinking about all the things that you have to give up or something like that. Cause that's overwhelming if your diet isn't where you want it to be. Okay. So number 11, similar could be limiting stimulants like caffeine. Um, I'm never going to tell you to give up caffeine completely unless you have like severe, severe anxiety, then it's something that you might want to consider. But if you are in a state of overthinking and an activated nervous system, um, or if you've just gone through a recent stressful event and your adrenaline uh, was activated for that thing, caffeine's not going to help. It is a stimulant. It's going to upregulate your nervous system. And if we were in a really um, intense, stressful event where our adrenaline got going, what happens there is that our brain actually opens up more receptors for adrenaline so that we can um, respond to another intense event that needs adrenaline. And it takes a while for those receptors to kind of um, get closed off to receiving adrenaline and caffeine attaches to those receptors. So it's going to keep you in an upregulated up state for longer. So don't increase your caffeine, cut back if you can, if you're in an upregulated state. Again, I'm not saying that caffeine is inherently bad, I'm just saying that it's a consideration to limit if you're in an upregulated um, nervous system state. Okay, number 12, social contact, finding somebody that you trust or love um, and just connecting with them. Call, give somebody a call or a text that you haven't talked to in a while that you're missing. Okay, uh, uh, what happens in those interactions is that we release oxytocin and oxytocin combats stress by lowering our cortisol. And number 13, my final one, similar to that social contact could be going and talking to your therapist. If you're in therapy, that can be a great way where you can learn more about these tools or how to apply them. Even the act of being in therapy and talking to your therapist uh, should be a down-regulating experience in and of itself. Of course, not every session is going to feel that way, depending on what you're talking about, but hopefully by the end, your therapist gets you back to a nice down-regulated state. And if you're in the state of South Carolina or Oregon and you're interested in working with me, for therapy, I will put a link to my website below where you can contact me for more information on that. So I hope that you found this information today helpful. Um, we learned a little bit about what overthinking is and why downregulating our nervous system is one piece of that puzzle. And again, I hope that you'll take away one of the strategies that I mentioned today that you're not already doing and just start there, start small. And then if you wanna come back and watch this again and add some more strategies, hey, more power to you. So happy down regulating your nervous system and I'll see you next time. Uh, good to be with you today and I'll see you next time. Bye now.